model evaluation techniques. The learning objectives of this subject or topic is to learn a variety of evaluation metrics for evaluating your supervised machine learning method and also to learn how to choose the right metric for selecting between different models and for parameter tuning. Model development cycle. To judge the performance of a model, we need to use evaluation metrics. There are different metrics available, some of which are specific to certain classes of models. It is therefore important to use the right metrics. Here we're going to see the graph of the four phases of model development cycle, starting with the representation phase in which we extract and select the object features that we want to use in our model. Then it comes to the training phase in which we train our model and basically set the values of the parameters of the model and tune it. After that, it comes to the evaluation phase here, in which we evaluate the performance of model. And then the cycles goes to the feature and model refinement. We're going to use this step to make the model better. And again, this cycle goes on and on to the cycle so that we get a better model. Evaluating a model. So far, we have used accuracy score to evaluate our classification models based on the predicted value and the actual value of the target variable. Accuracy score is just the percentage of correct predictions. This is the accuracy score function. So we just feed in the actual value of the target variable and the prediction that we have made. And the percentage of correct prediction is going to be output of this function. However, different applications have very different goals, which using just the accuracy score will not be enough. For example, in medical applications, such as detecting a tumor cancer from an image, we would like to minimize the number of false negative predictions. What does it mean? It means those with cancer that we would wrongly classify as no cancer. So that means that we will not let them know and they would not take care of them, themselves, although they have cancer. And that is very dangerous. So here, accuracy score does not reflect our concern for the patients. So we maybe should be looking for other methods in evaluating a model based on our goal for different applications. Analyzing binary classification problems. In binary classification problems, we only have two classes. Class one, or as they call it, positive class, which is the class of interest. And the other class is called class zero, or the negative class, which is anything else. To help you relate with these kind of definitions, considering a classical example of binary classification may actually help. That is, when we want to, for example, make a prediction to see whether a person has a disease, such as cancer, there are only two possibilities whether the person has the disease or for example, cancer, or he has not. In these scenarios, when the person takes a test that helps to detect that certain disease, for example, cancer, the outcome of the test is either positive or negative. Positive means he or she suffers from the disease, which is a bad news. Negative here, on the other hand, means that she or he does not have the disease, which is a good news. So similar logic also apply here. Positive class and negative class. Positive generally here doesn't mean that it's a good news. 
in terms of, for example, a disease. On the other hand, if it's, for example, a pregnancy test, then positive would be a good news. Based on these two classes and our also prediction for these, there are four possibilities. As you see here in this table, the actual class of a data point is shown in the row. For example, the first row shows the true negative. It means that the data point or the person it belongs to the negative class. And the second row is the other class, the true positive. That means that the person or the item belongs to the positive class or class one. So I'm going to show this by class one and this one by class zero. Our prediction for these are shown in the column. So this column, the first column, for example, is that our prediction for the data is negative. That is, it belongs to class zero, no matter what the actual class is. So we have two possibilities here, whether the actual class is one or whether the actual class is zero. Our prediction, however, is zero. Or we could actually make the prediction that the class is positive. So we have two possibilities, whether the actual class is positive or the actual class is negative. Nonetheless, our prediction is positive. So I'm going to show this by one here and show the other class, the negative class with zero. Based on these four possibilities or scenarios, we can analyze this classification problem. For example, if the true class of the item or the person is negative, and our prediction is also negative, that means here. So we say that we have made a wrong, a right prediction. Our prediction is correct. We predicted that the class is negative and the true or actual class is also negative. To simplify the representation of this, we are going to show this by using two letters. The first letter and the second letter. The first letter can be either T or F. T is true and F is false. True or false here determines or indicate actually the actual class of the data point. The second letter, however, indicates our prediction. So there are two possibilities, whether we have predicted that the data point is positive, which we show it by P, or whether we have determined or predicted that the class is negative. So we show it by N. So using the combination of T and F and P and N, we can actually specify the outcome, both our prediction and whether it is true or not. For example, here, the true class of this item is negative. Our prediction is also negative. So we have made a correct prediction. So let's show this by using the letters. So two letters here. Our prediction was negative. So there's going to be the second letter here, negative. The first letter should indicate whether our prediction is correct or not. The prediction uh, is actually correct. So we're going to say it's true. So this is true negative or TN. On the other hand, if the true class of this item is negative, but our prediction is positive. So we have made a mistake. We have incorrectly classified an item that is negative class to a positive class. So we show this by P here, indicating that our prediction is positive class. And since we are making a false or incorrect prediction, so we're going to use F here. So this is FP or false positive. Since our prediction is incorrect, that means we have made a mistake or an error.
This is called type 1 error or alpha. This is the same type of error that if you remember from statistics. So false positive is type 1 error. On the other hand, if the true class of an item is positive and our prediction is negative, that means here, we also have made a mistake or an error because the true class is positive and our prediction is incorrectly has a specified as negative. We show this by N stands for negative, that's our prediction. And since we are making an incorrect or false prediction, we are using F here. So this class is, uh, this actually output or scenario is Fn or false negative. Because we are making also a mistake here, because the true class is positive and we are incorrectly classified as negative, we are making a mistake or an error. This is called type 2 error or beta, similar to what we had in statistics. So beta or type 2 error is false negative. On the other hand, if the true class is positive and our prediction is also positive here, that means that we have made the correct classification or prediction. So to show this by this lettering, we're going to use P as positive because our prediction is positive. And since we are making a correct or true prediction, we're going to use T. So this class is TP or this scenario is TP or true positive. So true positive is a correct prediction. As you see here, out of these four scenarios, two of the scenarios are right or correct prediction. That's a start with T. TN, true negative, and TP, true positive. On the other hand, there are two scenarios that we make a mistake or an error. That's FP, which is false positive, and FN, false negative. It might be actually a little confusing, but you need to practice it and try to understand it and get used to it because we're going to use this quite a lot. Why accuracy score is not enough? Accuracy score is de defined as the percentage of correct prediction or the number of correct prediction divided by the total number of prediction, which is the total number of samples. Why this is not enough? Well, to understand this, let's see a scenario, a scenario in which you are dealing with imbalanced data. What is imbalanced data? In binary classification, imbalanced data is a data that most of your data belong to only one class. So, for example, Consider the transaction data sets. In transaction data sets, we have two types of classes, whether the transactions are legitimate or whether they are fraud. But most of transactions are not fraud, they are legitimate. So transaction data sets are an example of imbalanced data sets. Imbalanced data sets actually are very common in machine learning projects. Suppose you have developed a machine learning algorithm and have trained and tested on the imbalanced data set. Assume you have got an accuracy score of 99.9%, .9%, which is really like, wow, sounds really good, right? But because the data is imbalanced, no, not really. This is not using the accuracy score of 99% is not enough. It's not an indication of the quality of the prediction. Let's see why.
In what world and on what errors 99.9% .9 is not good enough? Well, let's consider this example. Suppose we have only two classes, a binary classification problem. We have the class one positive and class zero negative class. Suppose our data set is imbalanced, extremely imbalanced. It means out of the thousands of samples of data that we have, only one of them is class one and the rest, which is 999 of the data points are class zero. This is called extreme imbalance because the majority of our data are for class zero or negative class. So in this case, is our model good enough? Our model that provides a 99.9% .9 accuracy score. Well, to understand this, let's actually build another model. I'm going to call the model dummy because it doesn't have any logic behind it. It's just dumb. In this dummy model, the logic, the simple logic that is, it always classifies the sample as class zero. So in 99% of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, it would be correct because 999 of our data are class zero and only one of them are class one. So if a dummy model always predict that the class bill is class zero, then it would be correct 900 999 out of thousands or 99.9% .9 of the time. So this dummy model, this is stupid model has the same per performance as our model. So this means that our model is not special at all. It's not good enough because our data is imbalanced. 